But one of the major causes is that if we consume certain foods that contain the same kind of barcode as some of our cells naturally do, and for some reason our body comes to react to those foods and say, hey, you're a foreign invader, then when it attacks the proteins on those foods, it can then also has the potential to attack the glycoproteins on our cells. Now, those chemicals are called lectins. They're carbohydrate binding proteins. And one of the ways which they can be exposed to our immune system is if the normal mechanisms by which our gut digests and break down foods isn't working properly. So some of these little proteins or peptides coming across, they're meant to be chopped up into tiny pieces that are non-reactive. If they're coming across into clumps, we've got something called leaky gut, inflammatory bowel disease, so on and so forth, then they can actually cross over the wall of our gastrointestinal tract, reach an area called the lamina propria, where our immune system is surveilling for foreign pathogens, and we can create this cross-reaction, and we call it molecular mimicry. And this is quite well established. So I think addressing the gut is the first thing. Just to make the point, though, this is not the sole cause of autoimmune disease. It is a significant cause. We know that genetics interacts and we know that certain other environmental factors such as infections also interact. So having said that, genetics isn't the cause of autoimmune disease. I think genetics can load the gun, but it's usually environmental factors which will then pull the trigger. And that will be things like diet. Now, just to briefly talk of something I haven't ever really talked about before, is that we've actually got evidence that you might actually, this dietary exposure could also be considered to loading the gun. And then you might get an infection which effectively loads the, pulls the trigger. So I talked to you before about how we've got these barcodes on our cells. They're called glycoproteins. So basically a little protein stalk with a little carbohydrate cap on it, which is where the barcode is. Now, usually that's actually got a protective cap over the top of it. And it's something we call a sialic acid residue. And even if you had antibodies or proteins coming around that could read that barcode, this protective buffer cap on the top will stop it getting to it. We've got very good evidence that certain infections and infections that we know, streptococcus, that are often assumed to be a trigger of autoimmune disease, they can actually strip off this sialic, resi sialic acid residue, this buffer coating on top of the glycoprotein, thereby exposing the barcode to these proteins that are made by the immune system. So it, it's not just a matter of what you eat will pull the trigger, but it's definitely a major contributor. And the way I like to think about it, it's the thing that we have the most control over. It's very difficult to change your parents as an adult, and it's difficult to limit what infections you get, but we can control what we eat. It's also important to understand that these antibodies that we've got circulating around triggering autoimmune issues, they have a long life. And just because you stop eating something today doesn't mean that they've gone tomorrow. The antibodies against celiac disease, for instance, we know that they can eat, live for up to 18 months in the blood, 15, 18 months, no problem. DoctorsToTrust.com